Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of finance. You are watching Finance Concepts with Nikhil. For today's discussion, within the derivative topic, we have decided to talk about options. Everything about basics of options have been covered in this video. If you recollect when we have taken the first introductory lecture on derivatives, the very first example that I have given you was options. But it is fine if you do not have any recollection of that lecture. We are anyway going to start with the scratch when it comes to options. So friends, options are derivative contracts and being derivative contracts, obviously there are two parties involved. The parties over here are known as option holder and option writer. So, let us take an example to understand things. Assume that I have given you an option. That means there are two parties involved, myself and you. I have given you an option to buy shares of X limited at rupees 500 each. So you understand what is the option that I have conveyed to you. You have a right to buy equity shares of X limited at a price of rupees 500 each. This right you can exercise after 3 months from now. That means the maturity period or waiting period for you to exercise this right what I have given to you is 3 months. So you will hold this right and wait for a period of 3 months. On maturity after 3 months just imagine what would happen if the price of share of X limited in the open market goes to 542. Wonderful thing, right? You have a right to buy that share at 500 from me. I have given you that right. In the open market, the secondary market, the spot market, prevailing price is 542. Exercising your option and buying it from me will give you an advantage. You will be eligible to buy at 500 whereas prevailing market price is 542. That means you were an option holder. You had a right to buy. If you were not willing to buy the share, there was no obligation upon you, right? Just imagine the other way. That is what would have happened if the share price would have dropped say the share price is just 482. In that case, you would be better off buying the share in the open market, right? In such case, there is no obligation on you to buy the share from me at 500. You may let your option lapse. You may let it go. You may just ignore it. But when the price of the share has increased to 542, you would be interested in exercising your right. Now you would approach me and you will ask me that boss, you get this share for me at 500. Here is 500 and you should give me the share of X limited. It will now be my obligation to sell that share to you at 500. That was the negotiated price. That was the contracted price. So you understand what is happening on maturity. At the maturity, you are approaching me and you are forcing me to perform. That means I will have to arrange that one share for you and I will be selling that share to you at 500. So what is happening? Market price is 542. You are acquiring the share from me at just 500. That means you are making a profit of 42. On the other side, I will have to buy the share from open market at 542 and sell it to you at just 500. I am incurring a loss. So what is happening? On maturity, we may agree that let us not actually enter into this buying and selling business. Let us settle the differential in cash. As what we have seen in futures market that the futures contract are settled on a differential price basis that is the differentials in the price are settled in cash exactly same way option contracts are also settled on that same basis that is differential of price is settled in cash. So on the maturity you will approach me 
and you will claim that differential of rupees 42 in cash and I will be under obligation to pay to you. So, if I summarize this whole story, you had an option to purchase the share from me at rupees 500. The underlying asset was equity share of X limited. You had the right, no obligation, you had the right to purchase the share at 500 only. Prevailing market price on the maturity date was 542. The differential of 42 is arising as a gain for you and a loss for me. If that is a gain for you and loss for me, obviously you will approach to me on maturity and recover that differential of rupees 42. I will be in that case under obligation to pay to you. So friends, don't you think this is a biased thing that you have right, you have no obligation and the moment you exercise your right, I will be under obligation to perform. That means either I do not get anything or I pay off something. On the other side, you have a win-win situation. You find the price prevailing in the market higher than 500, you exercise your right and claim money from me and do not pay me anything. Now this one-sided transaction, this one-sided biasness is definitely existing in option contract and therefore to overcome this mismatch obviously this right what I have given to you, I am not going to give you this right freely. This right will always come at a cost. At the inception that means the date on which I have written that option and conveyed to you that same day upfront I will recover some charges from you. So the price that I will recover from you upfront is known as option premium. So friends, if I summarize this whole thing again, there are two parties involved in an option contract. I have become option writer and you have become an option holder. At the inception, at the beginning, I will provide you an option to buy equity share of X limited at a price of rupees 500. This is called strike price or exercise price. Price at which you are eligible to buy will be called strike price or exercise price. I will write this option and give it to you, hand it over to you and I will charge from you upfront the amount of premium. There will be some calculation involved over there, we will learn that at later stage but I will recover from you that amount of premium. Now we will wait till maturity, at the maturity date it is you who will decide whether to exercise the option or let it lapse. However, if you exercise your right, I will be under obligation to perform. So on maturity, when you exercise your right, you will recover that differential from me and I will be under obligation to pay that differential to you. Now friends, in this example, I have conveyed to you a right to buy. In the terminology of options, we call this as a call option. A call option is considered to convey right to buy. So inversely, if I would have given you a right to sell, say I would have conveyed to you a right through which you can sell a share to me at a defined price, then the right to sell a share or right to sell any other underlying would be identified as put option. So understand very clearly, call option conveys right to buy, put option conveys right to sell. But if I am option writer and you are option holder, the overall relationship still remains the same. It is you who will have to pay that option premium upfront to me. Always option holder will pay the premium to option writer upfront. That means whether the type of option is call option or put option, it is option holder who has to pay this premium to the option writer. So friends, I have introduced lots of small, small important terminologies over here. If you have been listening to this for the first time, it might be sounding little confusing for you, but do not worry. I will have lots of repetitions and gradually as in when we go ahead, 
you will be very very thorough with all these terms so let us do one thing whatever matter we have discussed i am summarizing the whole thing on screen right now i would want you to carefully look into that there is no need to write up that stuff because everything is given in your textbooks in detail so what i just want you is to note down this in your mind just understand it very well as per your textbook it is concept number 14 that is meaning of options so the two parties to an option contract are option holder and option writer option provides the right to the option holder to buy or sell the underlying at the contracted price the option holder is under no obligation to settle the option contract the action to be taken in this regard is solely at the discretion of the option holder so going ahead we will also define who are these parties option holder the one who has the right to buy or sell and option writer is the one who provides or sells such rights option contract provides right to the option holder to buy or sell something in future at a price agreed today such agreed price is known as exercise price or strike price so friends you should understand one thing very well that what we are trying to mention agreed price the contracted price we are calling as exercise price or strike price on the other side as we have discussed premium is the price of the option so the price of the option at which the option can be bought or sold is known as premium whereas strike price or exercise price is the price at which the right is conveyed that is right to buy or sell is conveyed so moving ahead what are call options call options conveys the right to buy and put options are options that conveys the right to sell moving ahead the option holder will exercise such right only when it is beneficial for the holder if option holder exercises the right then the option writer is under obligation to perform you should understand this point also very well the obligation in the hands of option writer will arise only in this condition that is if the option holder exercises the right so if the option holder is not exercising the right there will be no obligation on the option writer to perform so we have discussed one more thing that for buying the option the holder has to pay its price to the writer such price is known as premium at this stage an important point to be clarified friends i have already mentioned earlier again i am telling you when we talk about the price of an option the price at which an option can be bought or sold is necessarily its premium on the other side sometime back we have seen strike price or exercise price this is not the price of the option this is the price at which the share can be bought or sold now the price at which the share can be bought or sold is known as strike price or exercise price okay now when this right is conveyed by the option writer to the option holder and the price that is charged for selling this right that is the price of the option so be very clear with these terms don't get confused one more point of discussion that uh, you have seen options classified into call option and put option there is yet another way in which you can classify an option that is european options and american options so how do you classify options into european options and american options a european option is such an option which is exercisable only at its maturity date for example if there is a 3 month european option it can be exercised only after 3 months only at one day when it is matured on the other side 
American options are such options which can be exercised at any point of time on or before their expiry. That means for an American option there will be an expiry date on that date or before that date at any point of time the option can be exercised. So friends look into the terminology we are using maturity date for European options and we are using expiry date for American options because the moment an American option is written it is already matured it may be exercisable on the spot immediately. So an American option can be exercised at any point of time once it comes into existence up to its expiry that is on or before its expiry date any time. On the other side European options can be exercised only at its specified maturity date. So as we have discussed European options are options that can be exercised only at a specified date in future and American options are options that can be exercised at any point on or before a specified future date known as expiry date. Let us move ahead and talk something about option premium in details. Concept number 17 option premium. This is an upfront price payable by option holder to option writer at the time of entering into the contract. By paying option premium the option holder buys the option and the option writer sells such option. Option premium is payable irrespective of whether the option is exercised or not. And in order to decide whether an option should be exercised or not, option premium already paid by option holder to writer is completely irrelevant. Let us discuss these last two points in little more details. So first thing first, option premium is payable by the holder to the writer irrespective of whether the option is exercised or not. So let us take that same example, I am option writer, you are option holder and I have conveyed to you the right to buy share of X limited at rupees 500 ok. And now I have suppose charged a premium of rupees 20 upfront. So you have given me rupees 20 upfront and I have sold this right to you. I have written this option for you. Now this option will mature after 3 months. After 3 months suppose the share price of X limited is just rupees 450. So you have a right to buy the share at 500 but the open market price itself is 450. So obviously you are not going to exercise your right. Your right, your option will lapse. So in that case, do you think I am going to give you back that rupees 20? The answer is no. That is an upfront charge that I have taken from you for selling this option. Once I have sold this option, all rights, all risks and rewards attached with this option have been given to you. Whether it turns into a gain or a loss, it is your gain or your loss that rupees 20 which has gone into my pocket stays in my pocket. So if you would want to get back that money from me, you should just expect that the market price goes so high that you can get that differential. That means you can get that money, not just that much, even more than that, but by way of price differentials. But that premium is never going to go back to you. Secondly, while you decide whether to exercise the option or not, the premium that you have already paid, that rupees 20 what you have already paid should never be considered. If you consider that, you will be committing a big mistake. Let us extend the example. So you have paid rupees 20 to me and I have conveyed to you right to buy share of X limited from me at 500. Imagine that on maturity that is when the option becomes exercisable the share price of X 
is rupees 517 in the open market now how do you think open market price is 517 if you buy from me you will get it at 500 so there is a benefit of rupees 17 but you have already paid a premium of rupees 20 so your net loss is rupees 3 because there is a net loss let us not exercise this option are you going to think this way of course not you will not think like this because if you do that if you do not exercise the option then you are not losing rupees 3 you are losing rupees 20 so best way to deal with the situation is don't consider premium at all while you are deciding whether to exercise the option or not that premium can be considered in your accounting records to find out the net gain or loss that you have made or if somebody is asking you to find the net payoff or net profit or loss then you may consider that premium to find your overall position but for taking the decision you should not consider that friends one more thing I would tell you if I talk from your viewpoint for you the option premium that you have paid is a cost that you have already incurred in the past correct so haven't you learned something in costing that cost which have already been incurred in past which is not recoverable is a sunk cost and should not be considered for decision making so exactly same way the conclusion is option premium that you have paid upfront should not be considered while you decide whether the option should be exercised or not let us now talk about position of option holder now this is a very simple concept position of option holder can be classified into three categories in the money at the money and out of the money so imagine again you are option holder I am option writer we are going to continue with that same role that we have assigned right I am option writer you are option holder I have given you a right to buy share of X limited from me at rupees 500 if the market price of this share on the maturity is higher than 500 it will be beneficial for you to exercise this option that time we say the option holder is in the money if the market price of this share is lower than 500 then exercising this option will be a loss making event for you in that case we say the option holder is out of the money and when the market price on maturity is suppose same as the strike price that is exactly rupees 500 then exercising the option or not will not make any difference and that is the time when we say option holder is at the money so option holder is in the money when it is beneficial to exercise the option option holder is out of the money when it is loss making to exercise the option and option holder is at the money when there is no gain or loss arising on exercising the option so out of the three different positions in the money at the money and out of the money the option holder will exercise the option only when his position that is position of option holder is in the money now one thing is quite obvious you are option holder if you are in the money I go out of the money if you go out of the money my position is in the money so your and my position will always be the reversals so as we have discussed if exercising the option benefits the option holder then his position is in the money that is ITM if the option holder suffers a loss on exercising the option then his position is out of the money and where option holder is indifferent with whether to exercise the option or not then such position is known as at the money option holder will exercise the option only when his position is in the money let us check whether are we able to apply these concepts let us attempt question number 34 but first read this question information with respect to options that will expire after three months is available 
what kind of option would you opt for what action would you take on the expiry and friends then you have three columns where all these details are given so you have been given exercise price expected price on expiry and actual price on expiry so what we understand from this information uh, you have been given how many cases let us count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 cases you have 9 cases given and in each case you have to just answer three things number one what kind of option you would opt for then obviously you would mention what will be your position and lastly depending upon your position whether it is in the money at the money or out of the money you have to answer what action would you take on the expiry date so friends what i am going to do i am going to explain you maybe first two or three cases and based on that you should be able to answer all the remaining so let us deal with the first case where exercise price is 180 expected price on expiry is 160 and actual price on expiry is 180 so first thing first at the point where you are planning your option position you will not know what is the actual price on expiry right this will be known only at the end that is after three months so what we have is these two information according to which the exercise price is 180 so price at which the contract will be made is 180 and your expectation that the price that would prevail after three months is 160 it's your expectation anything may happen after three months we don't know your expectation is that the price would be 160 that means you are expecting the price to be 160 what would you do at 180 at 180 would you buy answer is no you would not buy something at 180 where your expectation about its price is 160 so what would you do at 180 i would rather prefer selling it at 180 that means if i want an option i would want an option to sell it i would hold the right i would hold the option to sell it so to hold the option to sell it you should hold a put option so what we are trying to tell is at the beginning you should plan that you should become a put option holder and what will happen on expiry whether your position is in the money at the money or out of the money we will talk about that later first let us talk about the position planning and where we have decided that you should become a put option holder so i am showing you how to present the solution on screen take note of that in the solution when you start with case one your choice your position on expiry and what action you would take on expiry three things we have to mention so choice what we have already decided you should become a put option holder now to find what will be your position on expiry you should look into whether you are in the money at the money or out of the money being a put option holder when you are a put option holder you have a right to sell the share at the strike price of 180 now look into the third column the actual price given in the question actual price on expiry is also 180 so your position on expiry will be at the money why at the money because strike price and prevailing market price both are same your position is at the money now what action would you take we have learned one thing that the action to be taken will be exercise the option only and only when the option holder is in the money but what happens when the option holder is at the money you will not exercise the option so finally what we conclude action to be taken on expiry will be lapse that means we will not exercise the option we will let the option lapse so let us go back to the question so that we look into what is given in the second case so here i have brought that question in front of you once again so let us deal with the second case in the second case exercise price is 125 and expected price on expiry is also 125 that means 
you find that whatever is the strike price or exercise price that is the same price that you would expect on expiry that means your expectation is even if you become a call option holder or put option holder either way you will be finding yourself at the money so why to go for such options that means we will have no choice over here and when we have made no choice over here neither a call option holder nor of a put option holder obviously we are not concerned with what happens on expiry so case 2 is simply nullified by mentioning that we don't want to enter into any option contract so let us discuss case 3 in case 3 we find exercise price is 160 and the expected price that we have on expiry is 175 that means the price what we expect is more that is 175 so at 160 obviously we should attempt buying the share at this price of 160 where the expected price is going to be 175 to buy the share at this price of 160 to have this right we should obviously become a call option holder so call option holder will be your choice and we will see what will happen on expiry where on expiry the prevailing market price is 155 we will look into what can be done with this so let us put up the solution ahead so going ahead with case 2 what we have already seen there is no choice that we have to make we are not entering into any kind of option contract with respect to case 2 so just leave it for case 3 the choice that we have made we have already talked about it and other two things we will see depending upon the price prevailing on expiry choice is very clear we have already talked about it in case 3 you should become a call option holder now your position on expiry depends upon the price that will prevail on expiry so the actual price is given to you as 155 and holding a call option with a strike price of 160 makes no sense that means you have a right to buy at 160 but the prevailing market price is just 155 so obviously your position is out of the money and action that you take will be obviously lapse please take note of this much and then we move ahead and if you don't want to present the solution this way alternatively you can present this in a tabulated format so in a table format you can present the whole solution but anyway whichever way you would want to write first write down this much
all right friends let us move ahead and uh, i am not going to show you solution for all other cases directly let us do one thing let us put you into practice right now so what you should do is look at this format i have given this for case 4 onward what you just need to do is fill up these three columns choice whether you should become a call option holder or put option holder secondly what will be your position on expiry as a call option or put option holder but mind it you should always be an option holder because you have to make a choice making a choice should never be of a option writer so you have to define your position at the end as in the money at the money or out of the money and finally you have to take an action depending upon the position so i'm giving you some time uh, maybe around 1 and 1/2 minutes to fill up this much and let us see whether you go correct All right friends enough time given to you let us check your answers so this will be your final answer just quickly check the whole thing and let us see whether you were correct or not All right friends you would have taken the final verification of whether you were correct or not let us move ahead and take up the most important part of this chapter that is concept number 18 gross payoff for both the parties now friends this is something extremely important computing gross payoff for option holder and option writer and this gross payoff also known as intrinsic value of an option so how would you determine intrinsic value of an option or gross payoff of an option this is the most important thing in the whole option basics so what i would suggest you is to pay complete attention to this explanation it is simple but you should not commit mistakes by trying to answer quickly you should go slow initially think a lot and once you have practiced that line of thinking automatically then your pace of approaching ahead will be super so let us first understand 
gross payoff is the worth of that option on its maturity or expiry or we would say the date on which the option is being exercised what is its worth worth of the option on that date is what we call as gross payoff or intrinsic value let me explain you this through an example and we will first take case of call option and then take the case of put option so case of call option first same thing you become a call option holder and the exercise price of the share for which i have written an option is rupees 500 and the prevailing market price on expiry of the option is rupees 542 so strike price is 500 prevailing market price is 542 by exercising this option you as an option holder will be benefited by rupees 42 so first thing first you should definitely exercise this option that means your option is in the money for you your position is in the money and secondly you should exercise this option and the worth of that option that you will in cash is rupees 42 so what do we conclude from this strike price was 500 and market price was higher it was 542 so a call option holder should exercise a call option only and only when the market price on the maturity or expiry date is higher than is greater than the strike price that means only when the market price is greater than exercise price a call option should be exercised let us take a case of put option say you have a right to sell a share at 500 and now say the prevailing price in the market is 542 are you going to exercise your option to sell the share at 500 where the prevailing market price is 542 obviously not because that will put you out of the money and when you are out of the money you are not going to exercise your option that means a put option is exercised only and only when the market price is less than the strike price so friends never to forget this a call option is exercised only when the market price is greater than exercise price a put option is exercised only when the market price is less than exercise price now what we further conclude is the differential between market price and exercise price when the option is in the money will be called as intrinsic value of the option or gross payoff of the option so such gross payoff or intrinsic value is an important calculation in the field of this option basics because gradually i'll take you to questions where you will have to prepare an option payoff table and option payoff graph for attempting questions like that what i have just discussed will be a very very fundamental but very important ground so let us do one thing what we have concluded what we have just discussed let us find the same thing concluded on screen in a more elaborate manner in a chart kind of manner so that your understanding becomes much enhanced so please pay attention on the screen so following the same lines as we have discussed a call option is exercised by the holder a call option is exercised by the holder what is the condition only when the prevailing market price is higher than the strike price that is mp should be greater than ep a put option is exercised by the holder only when the prevailing market price is lower than the strike price that is mp less than ep and gross payoff for the option indicates its value on the date it is exercisable it is also known as intrinsic value of the option so friends i have given you all these points in your textbook this part you need not write but the follow-up chart what i'm showing you that is something that you will have to write so this is just the summary of what we have discussed a few minutes back let us move ahead and take up first the case of call options so let us classify the scenario into two categories two possibilities one where market price is greater than exercise price and in the other case market price is less than or equal to the exercise price 
so we are dealing with call option let us recollect the condition of call option call option is exercised only when this condition prevails that is MP market price is greater than exercise price when this conditions prevail then the call option is exercisable that means in this scenario when market price is less than or equal to exercise price call option is not exercised so what we do is here we write the fact that call option will be exercised and here we write the fact the call option will not be exercised when the call option is exercised difference between market price and exercise price will be its worth that is its value so intrinsic value or gross payoff will be MP minus EP my friends till this box I am not talking about whether we are talking for call option holder or call option writer I am not classifying this yet this is intrinsic value or gross payoff of the option which is MP minus EP and when the option is not exercised the gross payoff or intrinsic value will simply be zero so let me explain something very important over here once again repeating that same example where I am an option writer you are an option holder and we are talking about call options my friends uh, I have written a call option whereby you have right to buy equity share of X limited at a strike price that is at an exercise price of rupees 500 only you are holding this option and on the date the option is matured we find that the prevailing market price is 542 now tell me is it a favorable scenario for you or not obviously yes you hold a right to buy the share at 500 and prevailing market price is 542 so obviously you find yourself in the money and I am out of the money that means you will be benefited on exercising this option that means you will claim the differential from me and I will have to pay it to you so how do we arrive at that value how much I have to pay it is simply difference between market price and exercise price so in our example how much money will you come and collect from me as a differential the answer is rupees 42 second thing how did we arrive at 42 42 was differential between 542 and 500 that is MP minus EP if it was MP minus EP we have first determined the value of the option itself that means the worth of the option was rupees 42 now if you take my viewpoint I am option writer I have to pay that money from my pocket for me for me specifically the gross payoff will be the intrinsic value of that option is 42 but for me the gross payoff will be minus 42 because this indicates a cash outflow from my pocket and for you the gross payoff will be plus 42 because this is a cash inflow coming into your pocket so friends what we should always do is value of call option when exercised is always going to be MP minus EP first you determine the value of the option now you look into who is holder and who is writer you are holder so for you this value will come into your pocket just put a plus sign along with that calculation of MP minus EP so MP minus EP gave you 42 put a plus sign which indicates a cash inflow for you for me MP minus EP is 42 I cannot put a plus sign I'll have to put a minus sign because for me it indicates an outflow so friends in a nutshell what I'm trying to tell you is first always find the worth of the option if you are holder you will receive this worth if you are a writer you will have to pay off that worth that means in this example you will first determine the value of that option on maturity that is rupees 42 because you are holder you will receive 42 because I am writer I'll have to pay that rupees 42 so let us note down even that and then we apply similar kind of flowchart presentation even for put options so once you have determined the intrinsic value or gross payoff for the option as MP minus EP next thing what you do is look into who is holder and who is writer 
so for the holder gross payoff it remains mp minus ep placed within brackets and outside the bracket do you see there is a plus sign so when you open the bracket it remains mp minus ep so mp minus ep for the holder remains mp minus ep because it is coming in the pockets of the holder however what happens in case of a writer for the writer of the option gross payoff will be same thing mp minus ep but negative sign placed outside the bracket it will become minus of mp minus ep and when you open the bracket it will become ep minus mp so finally mp minus ep is the gross payoff for the option holder and ep minus mp is the gross payoff for the option writer so friends though this flow chart is given in your textbook but i want you to write down this in your notebook as well i am giving you time quickly take note of this all right friends let us move ahead and deal with put options now in case of put options the condition for exercising the put option is when the market price is less than exercise price this is the condition for exercising a put option correct when market price is less than exercise price the condition for not exercising a put option will be all other conditions that is when market price is greater than or equal to exercise price so over here in the first tab where mp is less than ep the outcome will be you would exercise the put option over here you will not exercise the put option so when not exercised the value of the option will be zero obviously but when exercised what will be the value of the option look into the fact gross payoff will be ep minus mp let me give you a small explanation on this again assume that you are option holder and i am option writer but this time i have written a put option and this put option conveys to you a right to sell the share at 500 so 500 is the exercise price okay so you hold the right to sell the share at rupees 500 imagine now prevailing market price is something more than 
obviously you will not exercise the option why because you have a right to sell at 500 with this option without this option in the open market you can sell it for a higher price obviously you will not exercise this option this being a put option the condition to exercise the put option is market price should be less than the exercise price so let us take that scenario say market price is 470 only that means you have right to sell the share at 500 and prevailing market price is 470 now you find it beneficial to exercise this option so exercising this put option you will come and claim from me rupees 30 the differential you will come and claim from me and i'll have to pay to you rupees 30 how did we compute rupees 30 which was the worth of that option that 30 was computed not by taking mp minus ep because mp minus ep in this case will give you a negative value this time 30 was computed by taking 500 minus 470 that is ep minus mp so ep minus mp you will first determine as the value of the option and then same thing because i am writer it will be a negative thing for me there will be an outflow of that much value from my pocket and you being holder it will be an inflow of this value into your pocket so for you ep minus mp with a plus sign and for me ep minus mp with a minus sign and so what we have just discussed let me explain that same thing over here on the screen so value of put option when exercised is ep minus mp this is what we have just discussed and when not exercised its value will be zero its gross payoff will be zero when it is zero forget it when it is being exercised and its value being ep minus mp for the holder this value will come in the pocket and for the writer this value will go out of the pocket therefore what you do is you talk about the holder ep minus mp with a plus sign over here and when you talk about the writer ep minus mp with a negative sign outside the bracket when you open the bracket it will be mp minus ep so finally what we find for the holder the gross payoff will be ep minus mp and for the writer the gross payoff will be mp minus ep when it is a case of put option so friends i'm giving you time quickly take note of this and then we move ahead All right, friends, let us move ahead and learn to apply these concepts. Take up question number 37. What is given over here is type of option is European call option. Strike price is rupees 56 per share. 
call option premium is rupees 8 per share you are required to make a payoff table and indicate gross as well as net payoff for the option holder at different market prices determine the break even point wherever applicable show the payoff graph also provide the outcome from the viewpoint of call option writer so friends fact number 1 we have been given information about a call option which is a european call option so with a strike price of 56 means this option conveys the right to the holder to buy the share at rupees 56 premium paid is rupees 8 per share fine how to make payoff table and how to present the payoff graph that is what we have to mainly learn over here and important thing is first they have asked all these calculations from the viewpoint of uh, option holder and then they have also asked from the viewpoint of option writer so we will first take the viewpoint of option holder and then we shall consider the viewpoint of option writer so the solution begins from the viewpoint of uh, option holder let me explain you how would you present the solution what you would do is first write the basic things type of option is the european call option strike price is rupees 56 per share which we are also mentioning as exercise price and then when you are presenting the payoff table this would be a typical format whenever in examination you are required to present a payoff table always follow the same format whether it is call or put option or whether it is a case of holder or writer the format of the table would remain same now important thing is sometimes in examination they would mention different types of market prices here they have not given any indication so what we will do is we will just draw three lines first line is for market price less than 56 second line when market price is equal to 56 third line when market price is greater than 56 now action to be taken by holder never to forget it is a case of call option and the condition to exercise the call option is when MP is greater than exercise price so exercise price is 56 only when market price is greater than 56 the call option will be exercised so this column will be filled by simply writing lapse lapse for the first two lines and in the last line where this condition exists you will exercise this option so obviously when the option is lapsed the gross payoff will be zero right and when it is exercised it will be mp minus ep because this is a case of option holder the value of call option will always be mp minus ep and for the holder because that value is coming in the pocket it will remain mp minus ep that is in this case mp minus 56 now friends when you are required to prepare the payoff table gross payoff is what we have learned by far one extra thing what you'll have to do is this is a case of option holder so whatever premium is involved it is an expense that premium expense you are writing down over here whether it is any market condition the premium that you have paid is definitely rupees 8 one thing as a point of caution to decide whether the option should be exercised or not we did not consider this 8 rupees of premium paid by the holder but when you have to determine the net payoff that is your final amount of profit or loss obviously you have to consider all gains and losses all incomes and expenses your gross payoff was zero nothing you could obtain but premium that you have paid is rupees 8 so net payoff over here will be minus 8 in simple words to compute net payoff it will be gross payoff minus premium expenses so for the first line 0 minus 8 minus 8 second line 0 minus 8 minus 8 third line mp minus 56 minus 8 so it is minus 8 minus 8 and mp minus 56 minus 8 which will be equal to mp minus 64 so mp minus 56 again minus 8 will make it mp minus 64 now the next question is how would you determine the break even point break even point arises when the net payoff is zero now boss understand 
when mp is less than 56 or equal to 56 there is no chance that you get payoff other than minus 8. So, here both of these places break even point is not applicable only, but over here when the net payoff is m p minus 64 you need to equate m p minus 64 with 0 break even point simply means no profit no loss right. So, when you equate the net profit or net payoff with 0 you will be getting the break even point. So, m p minus 64 should be equal to 0. So, what will be the value of m p when you shift minus 64 to the right hand side you will be getting m p equal to 64. So, you would mention over here and here not applicable not applicable and here m p equals to 64. Friends I have explained to you this whole thing after a while I will also let you practice this right in front of me, but friends do not simply copy this right now. I would want you to you know carefully uh, apply this concept and fill up this table on your own right now also and then you may check on the screen whether you have done correctly or not. I am giving you sufficient time take time, but try doing it yourself right away and then you may check whether you are correct or not. So, I am giving you time your time starts now. Alright, let us move ahead and learn how to present the payoff graph. When you have to present a payoff graph, draw the two axes where x axis will indicate the market price and y axis will indicate the net payoff. What you should do on x axis plot two prices, one is 56 and another is 64. So, this is basically the strike price that is plotted on x axis and another is the break even point. On the y axis you should plot the outcome in terms of net payoff what we have seen for the first two lines that was minus 8. So, minus 8 is the net payoff 
when the market price is less than or equal to 56. So friends, what will happen? Imagine on x axis when we have taken market price being anything less than 56 or equal to 56, the option will not be exercised and so the premium that you have paid rupees 8 will be lost. So your constant net payoff will be rupees 8 negative up to from 0 to 56 correct. Now what happens when the market price is above 56 you start exercising your option and your payoff from minus 8 starts rising up. By the time it is coming to 64 as market price you will achieve break even and then with the increase of further market price the line will go on rising up like this. So when you present the payoff graphically it comes exactly this way. So your market price anything below 56 or equal to 56 will give you a constantly negative 8 rupees payoff and between 56 and 64 the loss starts reducing at 64 it is break even and let us mention this that at 64 it will be break even and beyond 64 as and when the market price rises the payoff will also rise. Friends before I give you any further explanation quickly take note of this much. Alright, let us try to understand something very very important over here. So you are finding this payoff graph typically for a call option holder. Look into one thing. With respect to call option holder, if the market price is falling, the call option holder will be incurring a loss. When the market price is rising, call option holder will be making profit. That means Point number one, call option holder will be making profit when the market is rising. That means when the market is bullish, the call option holder will make profit. That means why someone would have taken a call option, why someone would have, you know, become holder of a call option. The answer is very simple. That party, the call option holder must have bullish sentiments. Second thing, 
you see you have a limited loss right your loss will not exceed beyond 8 rupees this is limited loss for you and look into the profit potential you have unlimited profit right when you cross this break even with more and more market price rising up the payoff will go on rising without any limits so there is no limit to the profit that you can make but there is definitely a limit to the loss the loss is restricted to the amount of premium paid third and the last thing the break even point for the call option holder 64 you may directly compute this as 56 that was a strike price to that you add premium so 56 plus 8 will give you directly 64 in simple words break even point for the call option holder is always strike price plus premium so friends these three important points i am showing on screen please note down all right let us move ahead and uh, take the case of option writer so view point of option writer so what we do again is write the basic things type of option exercise price and when you prepare the payoff table i told you the format remains same with just a little bit of difference because this will be a case of option writer so you would notice one main thing that is instead of premium expense i have written over here premium income this column based on whether it is income or expense would highlight the case of whether holder or writer so obviously we have three different ranges of market price same thing less than equal to or greater than 56 now action to be taken by holder mind it even though it is a payoff table that you are preparing for the writer but action cannot be taken by the writer action will be taken by the holder so the same thing will happen laps laps and exercise gross payoff for laps it is always zero when it is being exercised for the holder it was mp minus 56 as gross payoff for the writer it will be 56 minus mp why it is like that i have explained you already so it was basically mp minus 56 as the value of the option and for the writer the value will go out of his pocket 
and therefore it will be negative of m p minus 56 eventually it will become 56 minus m p. So, 0 0 and 56 minus m p. Next thing premium income will be rupees 8 for all cases. So, for option writer you would see that gross payoff plus premium income will give you the net payoff. So, it is 0 plus 8 as 8, 0 plus 8 as 8 and 56 minus MP plus 8 will give you 64 minus MP. Coming to break even point at these two lines the net payoff is always going to be positive 8 rupees. So, this place the break even is not applicable at all. Break even will apply only in this case when MP is greater than 56 break even means the net payoff should be 0 that means 64 minus MP will be equated to 0 again when you solve that equation that is 64 minus MP equal to 0 you will eventually get MP equal to 64. So, what we do over here I told you not applicable not applicable and MP equal to 64 in the last line. So, friends quickly take note of this and then I take you ahead. All right, friends, let us move ahead and draw the payoff graph. So, this being again a case of call option, I told you you would plot the same things over here. That is, you will plot on x axis the market price, which will be having two points to be plotted that is, 56 and 64. 56 is the strike price, and 64 is the break even point. So, on the y axis you will plot only one thing that is the positive payoff when the market price was less than 56 the positive payoff was 8. So, now look into what will be the case of option writer over here that is call option writer any market price which is less than or equal to 56 the option is going to lapse and whatever premium income has been received by or earned by the option writer will become the net payoff because the gross payoff will be 0 and premium income will be 8. So, constantly there will be 8 rupees of payoff for any market price being less than or equal to 56. Then from 56 to 64 the payoff will start reducing though it will be positive, but it will reduce at 64 you will again arrive at break even and beyond 64 you will start incurring loss. 
so the payoff goes this way constant 8 then decline to break even and then a case of loss so here is your payoff and secondly we would identify 64 again as break even so friends take note of this also and then i give you some important points to write down All right, friends, you would have finished writing this. Before we move ahead, let us discuss some important points. Now, the case is of a call option writer. Look at one thing. The strike price was 56. The call option writer is making profits when the price is below 56. That means when the prices are falling, the call option writer is making profits. In other words, call option writer must had bearish sentiments before this party would have entered into the contract. Second thing, break even point for even the call option writer in this case is 64 and what we have discussed earlier 64 is nothing but 56 plus 8. This 56 indicates the strike price and 8 is the premium. So, the call option writer will also experience the break even which will match with strike price plus premium lastly you see there is a limited amount of profit over here but if the market price starts moving up this decline continues and it will go on and on that means there is chance of incurring unlimited amount of loss for the call option rider for making just a limited amount of profit so let us do one thing let us write up these important points also. I have explained you already. Quickly take note of this. Finish writing this and then we move ahead.
all right friends let us move ahead and take up the next following question that is question number 38 similar type of question but now we find that this is a case of put option so what is the information type of option is european put option strike price 56 put option premium is rupees 8 and same types of requirements for option holder as well as they have demanded the viewpoint of option writer so more or less same thing we find one thing that this is not call option but a put option so let us see how to solve this question we first take the viewpoint of option holder so it is a case of put option holder so first we would mention that the strike price is 56 per share and then we make a payoff table payoff table format would still remain the same and this being a case of option holder in premium column we have written very clearly it is a premium expense same three things three types of price ranges market price less than 56 equal to 56 and greater than 56 my friends now I am willing that you should fill up this whole table from your side before I show you the solution I am going to give you exactly 90 seconds and you should be done with your table fill up your time starts now All right, friends, I have given you exactly 90 seconds. And now let us check whether you were correct with your table fill up. So first thing first, put option, correct? This is a case of put option. And put option will be exercised only when market price is less than strike price. That is when market price is less than 56 in this case. So here it will be exercise and then in the other two lines, laps and laps when put option is exercised the gross payoff for the holder will always be ep minus mp that is strike price minus market price or exercise price minus market price in this case it will be 56 minus mp and when it is not exercised and lapsed it will be zero and zero premium expenses rupees eight in all cases net payoff will be gross payoff minus premium expenses so in the first line it will be 56 minus MP minus 8 that gives you 48 minus MP and here it will be 0 minus 8 and 0 minus 8 which will be remaining as minus 8. Obviously when you come to break even column over here in the last two lines the break even is not applicable over here to arrive at break even you have to equate the net payoff to 0 that means 48 minus MP should be equal to 0. When you solve that equation 48 minus MP equal to 0, MP will be 48. So MP equals to 48 will be the break even in the first line. In other two lines, the break even is not applicable. So along with this explanation, I'm sure you would have understood the whole thing. And I'm also sure that before I have started this part, you would have done this whole thing correctly on your own. So let us move ahead and make the payoff graph.
So again, on x-axis, we would take market price and on y-axis, we would take the net payoff. We will again plot two things on x-axis, that is the strike price 56 and the break-even point that is 48. Now friends, you would have noticed one thing, this is a case of put option holder. Put option holder is going to make money when the prices are falling, right? When the market price is less than or equal to 56, then the put option holder is going to make money. What happens when the price goes beyond 56, the option will be lapsed and the payoff will be simply minus 8. That is what we have identified, right? So this minus 8 of payoff will not start this time at early stage, but this minus 8 payoff will start after the price is 56. When the price is less than 56, that is less than the strike price, the payoff will be positive over here. And when the price is 0, if you may substitute the market price to 0, the net payoff will be matching with break even point that is 48. Friends, you might be wondering what are these lines, right? Now let me explain one thing. These are called breakers. If you see, on scaling basis, the distance from 0 to minus 8 and here, this short distance we are considering as 0 to 48 and 0 to 48. So basically, in the whole graph, there is no parity in the scaling. And to overcome that disparity of scaling, we put breakers so that we are shifting our focus directly to this line. That means scaling in this part is being overruled. Now, so what we do is, the payoff from 56 onward will be minus 8. But before that, it will be a better payoff for the option holder. At 48, there will be break even. So the payoff line would be this way as minus 8 from 56 onward. Between 48 and 56, it will be showing this trend because it has to touch to break even when the price is coming at 48. The net payoff would be 0 over here. And when further the price reduces, the payoff would increase, increase and increase by the time the price comes to 0, the payoff would be exactly matching with the break even. That means at 0 as market price, the net payoff will be that same amount which was break even. So the line goes this way. You may please note it down and then I give you some important points. Alright friends, uh, before I take you ahead, let us discuss some important points. You see what is happening, put option holders case. Put option holder is making profits when the market price declines. That means, put option holder must had bearish sentiments before entering into such contract. So, put option holder has 
bearish sentiments that is one thing secondly the break even point is 48 which was basically 56 minus 8 that means strike price minus premium will give you break even point so for the put option holder the break even point will always be strike price minus premium third important point this put option holder will always make a limited loss where loss is limited to the amount of premium paid and will also make a limited profit where the amount of profit is always going to be limited to whatever was the break even. So in this case break even is 48 maximum profit that the put option holder will earn will be also rupees 48. So I have discussed these points please take note of the same. All right, friends, let us move ahead and take up the case of option writer. So this is a case of or viewpoint of a put option writer. So same example from the viewpoint of option writer. So same format of payoff table. And again, same thing. I'll give you exactly 90 seconds to fill up this table. Your time starts now. Alright friends, time up for you. So let us check whether you have done it correct or not. So three different market price ranges. Don't forget this is a case of put option writer. Action though will be taken by the holder only. So it will be exercise, lapse and lapse. 
gross payoff for a put option rider will be MP minus EP that is MP minus 56 and where the option is getting lapsed the gross payoff will be zero because it is a case of option rider premium income will be recorded and premium income when added to gross payoff you get the net payoff break even will again be MP equal to 48 and in other two cases it is not applicable. So just check quickly whether you are correct with this. All right, let us move ahead with the payoff graph. This time, put option writer will make profit when the market price is rising, correct? When the market price is rising, put option writer will make profit. And what you can see, beyond 56 put option rider is making profit but a limited amount of profit that is rupees 8 below 56 the payoff starts reducing 48 is the break even so at 48 of market price the net payoff will be zero and then if the market price further falls towards uh, zero the payoff will also start reducing but there is a limit of this loss the loss is limited to the exact amount of break even point. So 48 is the break even point and what I want you to do is note down this quickly and then we discuss some important points. All right, friends, before we move ahead, let us discuss again some important points. Point number one, the put option writer is making profits when the market price rises. That means put option writer has bullish sentiments. Secondly, there is break even arising at 48 and 48 is nothing but 56 minus 8. That means strike price minus premium will give you break even even for the put option writer and finally third and last important point there is a limited profit and there is a limited loss so limited chance to earn profit of just rupees 8 that means profit is limited to the amount of premium income whatever be the amount of premium that is the limit of profit and whatever be the break even that becomes the limit of the loss so if the price falls below 48 obviously the price may theoretically fall to what maximum zero in such case with each rupee of price fall 
your payoff will also decrease by 1 rupee and finally what you get is maximum loss as 48 and maximum profit as 8. So let us even write those important points. Alright friends, you would have finished writing all this. Let us move ahead and uh, summarize some important discussions. Concept number 19, net payoff and break even. This is all what we have concluded from the past two questions. Net payoff for the option holder is always equal to gross payoff minus premium. Correct? What we have understood is you always first compute gross payoff and if it is option holder from gross payoff you subtract premium to arrive at net payoff. Likewise the net payoff for option rider will always be equal to gross payoff plus premium. Correct? Premium will be the income for option rider and expense for option holder. Break even point is arrived at when net payoff equals to zero break even point for call option equals to strike price plus premium and break even point for put option equals to strike price minus premium. Friends what you are finding on screen is nothing new this is just summary of what we have already learnt in the earlier two questions and you need not even write this stuff this is given in your textbook already. Let us move ahead. Concept number 20, outcome of call option. Holding a call option provides the holder an opportunity to make unlimited profits when the market price rises up and with a risk of limited loss when the market price falls. Such loss is limited to the amount of premium paid. Moving ahead, writing a call option creates for the writer a chance to incur unlimited loss when the market price rises up with an opportunity to make limited profit when the market price falls. Such profit is limited to the amount of premium received. Call option holder makes money in a bullish market and call option writer makes money in bearish market. Friends, all these concluding points are written in your textbooks already. I don't want you to copy all this. Just focus on understanding this as a summary. Moving ahead, we talk about outcome of put option that is concept number 21. First, what happens when you are holding a put option? Holding a put option provides the holder an opportunity to make limited profits when the market price falls. Such profit is limited to strike price minus premium and 
with the risk of limited loss when the market price rises up such loss is limited to the amount of premium paid so friends uh, important thing is holding a put option will give you chance of limited profit and limited loss so what happens when the market price falls you would find when the market price falls the option holder is making profit and the profit is limited to the extent of strike price minus premium which is also break even for the put option and with a risk of uh, limited loss when the market price rises up so when the price is rising up what will happen is a put option will get lapsed and therefore the holder will be incurring a loss a limited loss and that loss is limited to the amount of premium paid moving ahead we talk about the outcome of writing a put option so when you write a put option there will be a possibility of limited loss when the market price falls such loss is limited to strike price minus premium and with an opportunity to make limited profit when the market price rises up such profit is limited to the amount of premium received so put option holder makes money in bearish market and put option writer makes money in bullish market so friends i am sure you would have understood this whole thing and i am just requesting you to do one task at home please revise all this matter what we have learned today very well so that when we are moving ahead with other sections within this options part you should find yourself comfortable if you are not clear with these options basics you will struggle in the field of options and definitely ahead in the field of derivatives also so fine let us put an end to this session and uh, we declare this as end of part 5 thank you so much for attending this class